is 14 years old and lives in Tembisa, one of the most underprivileged parts of Johannesburg. To the rest of the world, she's just a statistic. Another poor child from Africa, experiencing monthly riots in her school, living in a neighborhood as part of a municipality of 37% youth unemployment, an average national income of 19,000 to 38,000 rand. If she manages to graduate from her high school in Famalong, her chances of entering university is a slim 25%, and that's for her school. In the area, that number goes down to 14.6. But this isn't anything new. Statistically speaking, in South Africa, only 35.2% of black South Africans acquire some form of higher education, according to the 2011 national census. But if you ask Toya, if she cares about her grades, her eager little face will lighten up and she will say, of course I do. But then, when it comes to her daily activities and studies and academic engagement, we don't see the same level of excitement and energy translated to these areas. The odds are heavily stacked against Toya. Her circumstances make it nearly impossible for her to look beyond the adversity and the hardship that are ahead of her. And if we were in her shoes, would we be really able to find some hope and that bit of extra motivation when it comes to our future? If you were honest with yourself, the answer is probably no. But Toya, she won't give up. She won't give up that easily on her future. In fact, she has a big dream. She wants to become an entrepreneur and open her own restaurant. And she's even picked a name for it, Sweet Something. Or as the tagline says, our first impression is your first bite. Her entrepreneurial spirit endures in the face of adversity. And it is this ambition, this die-hard dream, that will form the bedrock on which she will build her future. Welcome to a generation of dreamers. Toya isn't the only one. Throughout the past few months, I've been working with children across Tembisa and Soweto. And this dream, this ambition, is big, it's viral. It lives in the hearts and minds of these children. And it's bigger than you can imagine. In places that should be devoid of hope, there's a revolution stirring. There are children who are dreaming of becoming doctors, pilots, scientists, lab technicians, I know it's really specific, forensic scientists, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Oh boy, we better buckle up here to get ready for them because they're coming. So in this world of abundance of dreams and ambitions, why they're not reaching the goals? Because they should be reaching their goals. But the sad reality is that we don't live in this ideal world. And as you all know too well, South Africa alone, the statistics considered, we're going to see that ambition is just not enough. In South Africa, only 18% of children enter university, and half of them drop out before even graduating. And we come back to two foundational problems to that. One of them is funding. These kids do not have access to funding at the personal and at the state level to access higher education. Number two, they don't even acquire the skills and the grades to further enhance their education. So faced with these unsurmountable obstacles, the inevitable outcome is the death of motivation. So before they even get a chance to take on and pursue their goals, they lose sight of their ambitions. They never get a chance to actually go and pursue. So how do we go tackling about this problem? So I started this initiative a few months back. It's called Africa Success. Um, and we went out to find a very basic answer to a very basic question. What is it that defines success? And in our context here in Africa, Financial success, as that tends to be the launch pad to more selfless dimensions of success. We went out to the whole world serving numerous financially successful people across all industries to try and understand is a common set of traits that we can detect that these individuals exhibited throughout their childhood that made them become successful. And what we saw, we were driven that if we find practical habits, practical behaviors, 
perhaps we could bring these back into these communities and instill them in these kids using technology and give them the tools necessary to turn their ambitions into tangible success. So we found five common behaviors across these childhood behaviors. Number one, they read profusely and across a wide range of topics. Number two, they had a mentor. Number three, they participated in team sports, which gave birth to their spirit of competitiveness and grit. Number four, they were independent and experienced different cultures. Number five, they believed they would be successful. So this isn't necessarily enlightening. This isn't necessarily, you know, relevating. These are all the things we would encourage all our kids to do. Hopefully, <laughs> you would think so. But surprisingly, what we're finding is that these behaviors are becoming less and less common amongst our youth. And perhaps that's why our dreamers aren't becoming doers. So with more insight into this problem and a greater sense of determination, we want to find a tangible solution to this. So over a three-week period, using a combination of Facebook Messenger, a chatbot in a Facebook Messenger, and mentorship, and gamification, we essentially launched a pilot to engage with the kids. We wanted to incorporate all these behaviors into a framework and try and instill all these behaviors into these children. And what we saw was 40% of the children started engaging with the chatbot. This is pretty considerable in isolation. But then when we went back to the schools and revisited the kids and the great excitement we saw in their eyes, we thought, you know, engagement should have been higher than this. So two weeks into the program, we added the mentorship component where we connected a mentor and mentee via WhatsApp. <laughs> as simple as that. And what we saw was immediately a 40% further increase. Now the engagement sitting at 80 to 85%, we started realizing the potential that we had initially envisioned of such an initiative. Our mentors from our bank, we tasked them with inspiring, encouraging the kids to achieve their weekly goals, to instill positive reinforcement in them, and to give them information about their goals and about their ambitions. And the key lesson here was that the balance between technology and human component was essential to the efficacy of the initiative. Our dreamers needed heroes. They needed real life heroes from their own generation or one above, because that was tangible, that was aspiring. And we didn't only see engagement scores going up. We saw 50% of the children who were actively mentored increase their class participation by 20%. Now, that is key to the initiative because when students start speaking up in class, they learn how to express their ideas in a way that others can understand. When they ask questions in class, they learn how to obtain information to further enhance their understanding of a topic. They engage and are engaged. And this serves to sustain motivation and nurture ambition. But we didn't only see class participation going up. We also saw improvement across scores of lateral thinking tests. Now, who would have thought that something as simple as active mentorship can lead to better test results? Duh, you're thinking. <laughs> but wait, it gets even better. We saw improvement across all the key problem areas that we initially identified as part of our assessment, including 12.5 increase their hand and homework skills, 25% increase in peer engagement, and a staggering 100% of children participating in school sports. Even though the initiative is still in nascent stages, we can confidently state that active mentorship is bearing fruit. And this is key to the African context because of the disparity in ambitions between generations. Active mentorship can serve to help and coach these kids to achieve their ambitions. We can't expect a parent who's never been an entrepreneur before to teach the skills necessary to become one. Our children need real life heroes to boost their self-confidence and we can provide that. 
Now, how are you going to ask me? By artificial intelligence. Now, you may excuse my bias here, as this is my area of expertise. It's my passion, my profession. But I genuinely believe that by using the power of big data and artificial intelligence, the two most disruptive and successful subsets of technology industry today, we can, in essence, disrupt success in its own right, and thereby redefining the future of our generation of dreamers. Artificial intelligence allows personalization and prediction on a global scale. And we see novel examples of artificial intelligence in the world today, beating the champion of the world's oldest and most complex board game, writing rudimentary musical compositions. We even see artificial intelligence in the retail space, creating deeper relationships with shoppers through contextual, meaningful, relevant experiences and dialogue. We even see artificial intelligence in the rise of a style subscription service, tailoring clothing and accessories to individual tastes of women and budgets and lifestyle. The specific service that we looked at is seeing 80% of their clientele return within 90 days for a second round of order. And a third of them spending 50% of their clothing budget on this service. The future is approaching and is approaching faster than we are realizing. But how are you going to ask me, are we going to use this application of artificial intelligence for our context of education and mentorship? By making the dreams become data-driven dreams. So we've identified a problem. We've identified a lack of resources and skills for children. We've identified a potential solution leveraging active mentorship to encourage and motivate. But how are we going to create an end-to-end -end solution that is truly redeployable, scalable, affordable, and yet consistent and personal? Not just at a South African, but ultimate at a global level. Again, in my view, by using artificial intelligence. Harnessing artificial intelligence means now kicking off the journey to building a truly one-on-one -on -one personalized mentoring engine, suitable for each individual something for these dreamers that will help them on their path to achieve their dreams, to push them and positively reinforce them when they need it the most. Allowing anybody, irrespective of where you're born and under what circumstances, to be mentored in a consistent and personal way. Using key performance indicators, such as academic grades, class participation, and peer engagement, coupled with deep learning and natural language understanding, using open source libraries such as TensorFlow for mentor and mentee chat logs, we can create a truly democratized AI platform that can automate and understand what style of mentorship resonates with whom. And then we can build and provide a personalized mentorship experience to each one of these children on their personal path to success. So why do we think this is game-changing? Why do we think this is going to make such a big difference in the world? Because through individualized mentorship and the seamless integration of that with a powerful, self-improving AI framework, we have what I would like to call the golden key, the catalyst to drive personal engagement and academic engagement, which can lead to increased academic success, as we've seen and which is the prerequisite for financial success in today's world, and ultimately prosperity in the future. And this, we can even scale further by taking it to the whole world and tackling a universal problem that doesn't just affect South Africa. Imagine if we could instill this relentless drive into all our children out there. Imagine what we could achieve as a human race if all our kids could unleash their potential and pursue their dreams. This is where probably John Lennon would walk into this room and say, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I've been inspired by these kids, by these dreamers, and the sheer scale of their ambitions. I want to see these ambitions come real and see how far they can go. I want to make the world's influential minds accessible to all of these children in a personal and consistent way. I want to share stories of people like myself who've experienced war and hardship, but who've risen above that. I want to show to these kids that you can overcome your adversity and achieve your goals. In an ordinary world, 
Toy and I would have never met. I would have never been able to coach her through hardship, nor instill the unshakable belief in her that she can overcome that and become stronger through it. But through fake, you know, unfortunate, you know, fortunate circumstances, I got the chance to actually meet her. And through my mentorship by WhatsApp, I was able to share my stories with her. I was able to share with her how at the age of seven, I had to go through war, and I didn't have access to you know, education for part of my life because my school shut down. Or how at the age of eight, I had to become a translator and adult to my family because we moved from Iran to Germany. And I, didn't, I happened to be the first to learn German and help my family integrate into German society. It gave her hope that all of us have difficulties in our life. And it served as a proof that anyone, anybody can rise above their situation in life. And this is what we need in the world today. We need to connect our children with individuals who haven't only achieved hardship, but who have risen above their hardship constantly over and over again to achieve their goals. So I want to leave here today having expressed my deepest, deepest belief in the power of this AI platform because it can change our future and the lives of our children. It can help shape a new future for us. It's a long journey, it's a tough one, but I believe we can make this vision come true. A future in which I can touch many more lives like Toya's, and a future in which our generation of dreamers becomes a generation of doers. So I'd like to conclude with a quote from Tom Bradley, who once said, the only thing that will stop you from fulfilling your dreams is you. Thank you very much. And we have Toya here.